Hi everyone. Today we'll be looking at how we can make professional looking score videos that work well if you've got export from your new score or even if you've got a live recording. And the best thing is that we'll do it all using free software. So let's go. I have this arrangement in MuseScore, but as you can see MuseScore is designed, or it's set up, that the first page is on its own and the next two are together. You can see with the page numbers on either side, like a booklet, you know, as you would print it. Um, but for our score, we want two pages next to each other, and so we want our first and second page next to each other. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, create a blank page, let's call it a title page or a cover page, um, and that will, that will help us with this process. I'm going to select this frame that has the title, then I'll go to Add, Frames, and Insert Vertical Frame. That adds this one up here. Then while it's selected, I'll press Control and Enter, and that creates a page turn, so that now this first page is on the second page. And now I've got those two pages next to each other in their formatting, if you know what I mean. We'll add the title, subtitle, and composer, etc. on this front cover, uh, possibly because it could be useful as a front cover, but also it makes a really good thumbnail for later on. So let's do that quickly. I'll probably just want to go into the Properties tab, click on any of these texts, and change the size. Uh, let's move this down a little bit. Let's also move this to the center and increase its size. And that gives us a nice little cover page. So once we've done that and we're happy with the formatting of the rest of the pages with our um, system breaks and our page breaks and all of those kind of things, then we want to export this as PNG and as WAVE. So let's export first as a WAVE file, export. And I will go to a WAVE audio. This is the highest quality that we can get. And because we're doing this for video, we might as well do this at 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz. We're exporting the main score. Obviously that was sped up. It does take a fair amount of time. Now I will go to file export again. This time we'll select PNG images because we want each, and, and I've selected quite a high resolution because we're making a high quality video. Uh, and these will select each page as a separate PNG image. So let's make a new folder, call it uh, PNGs. And we can put those in there. And that happens very quickly. Okay, so we're done with MuseScore. I'll just save that and we can close that down. DaVinci Resolve is my favorite video, free video editing software. Um, and it's, yeah, as I say, free to download. There is an, a studio version that you can purchase, but really you don't need it for most aspects. It has a lot of features that are very, very useful. And so that's what we'll be using today. So once it opens, I'll go into my score videos and create a new project. Let's call this African Medley. And this is how our project opens. We have no clips. Before we start importing our PNGs and our WAV file, we want to make sure that the settings are correct. So I'll come down to this cog down here. And in our master settings, the timeline format, we want to have 1920 by 1080, that's full HD video, and 24 frames per second. Those are the, these are the best settings to have for YouTube. Now we can go to our folder structure and import the WAV file, there it is. Just drag it in there and we'll get that. And in our, our PNGs folder, we'll just select all of them and drag them in as well. Okay, now I'm going to the edit page because that's where I prefer to work. And first thing I'll do is grab my WAV file and drag it into the bottom section here with the audio and line that up. We're going to ignore this front cover for now uh, because that's going to be our thumbnail and we want to start with the score. So let's get our first two page, well, first two pages of the score, but we'll drag them in one at a time. So the first one and the bottom. The next one, we can drag it there, but we actually want it on top of the other one. There we go. So I'll drag it on there. 
And as we can see in this preview window, this is the second page. Well, let's let's keep the page numbers that we've got. This is the third page. Uh, and so we want to see when does the third page end that I need to move on to my fourth page. Uh, and so I'll just drag it out if I click and drag there. That seems to be the spot. So I'll drag it back to that point and it snaps very nicely to the to the playhead and then I can drag this one there as well. Okay, but I don't want to just see the first, the second page, I want to see both of them side by side. And so I need to change their positions. And so we need to go over to the inspector. If it's not there, you can click on inspector and the transform of this one that is currently selected. And we want to change the position X that moves it from side to side. And uh, I've discovered that 960 works well for that page with minus 960 on this page. And that puts them side by side with the bottom. Let's make sure that it's on video one is on the left side and video two, which is obviously page three on the right side. And so we can just continue that process until we get to the end. So I'll add the next two pages. Now I've got to the end and I've only got a single page left. So I'll put it on the bottom and drag it out all the way to the end and just leave it like that for now. That one can stay in the middle. Now, as you can see, these ones, I haven't changed their position yet, but there is a really nice shortcut to do this. If I click on the first one that I have changed, control C, then I can select all of these others by dragging a box and then use alt and V, not control V, but alt and V, and then use change the position. And now I'm just copying across the position of those and those have all changed. Then I'll go back to the beginning Click on this bottom one, control C again. We can use alt and mouse wheel to zoom out. Uh, I want to select all of those, except not the first one. I'll just use control click to unselect it. Control, sorry, alt V and apply again. And now all of my pages are very neatly next to each other. Isn't that wonderful? I could leave it here. That is perfectly acceptable and looks very professional. But it, wouldn't it be nice if we had that page turn effect uh, moving from page to page? And so we will get that. So I found this excellent YouTube video on how to make these page turn transitions, but they've also provided for free the template in the video description. I'll leave a link in this video's description. It's at Buy Me A Coffee, and I'm sure if you can support them, please do, but they are offering this transition for free for those who can't afford it. So that's that's really nice of them, and uh, I want to have a shout out to Essential Video Editing for providing this for everyone for free. So once you do that, and they send it to your email, I think, and you can download it. Once you've downloaded it, you can unzip that folder, uh, and then double click this Essential Page Turn Transition, uh, which is a template bundle, and DaVinci Resolve will install it for you. You may need to restart DaVinci Resolve to see the changes, but once you do, uh, we can start using it. Okay, we're ready to insert this transition effect. So I'll click on the gap, that, that transition between those two clips on the top video line, and then we, we can close our media pool. Let's have effects open, and I'll go to video transitions, use the arrow on the side, and essential transitions, and there it is. And I can just drag it on, and I get a standard one second transition. Now this is quite uh, computer intensive, so you might need to test it just by using your left and right arrows. We can move forward a frame at a time, and we can see that that is quite a cool little transition. However, we do want to change some things about it. So if you just click on that box, which now represents the transition, we have again in our inspector, some settings that we can change. And so what we'll want to do definitely is to change the direction. At the moment, it's coming from our bottom left corner. 
and we want to change it to the bottom right corner so I'll just add a minus in front of there and make it minus 30 and that makes it the top right corner uh, it works in degrees so you could make it from any corner that you'd like I like the top right because that makes sense uh, when I'm paging on a normal score now I would love to use this feature that says show back and then change the back to a white color so that we kind of have the back of the page unfortunately as you see if I swipe through this it then gives us this feeling of I'm even turning the page on the black parts of the page and it's not you know just turning the page itself so that's a bit of a pity any DaVinci Resolve experts who could help us edit this transition uh, this is a fusion transition and so you are able to edit it uh, I just don't have the expertise to know how so I'm going to turn off that again and again if you want to go extra fancy you can add motion blur but as you can see this makes the the computer very sluggish uh, so I'm not going to use this I don't think it's quite fun you can turn the quality down a little bit um, it's not really necessary I don't think there's nothing wrong with having especially with such a quick transition so we now need to copy this so I'll use control C and then go to my other transition and control V and there it is and now if we swipe through this both pages should be turning together let's just make sure that they do yes there we can see the other one lifting up as well and we even get a little bit of shadow from the page so that's a nice little transition and we can then copy that to all our other transitions so I've still got it selected I'll go control V control V and etc etc let's speed this up now the last page is a special one uh, because I've got it on its own if I had two pages you know um, if the last two pages were together that would not be a problem but because this one is on its own I'm going to add it there but what I'm also going to do uh, and because as you can see this doesn't wait let's get there that's fine the page starts turning but the other one doesn't and then it suddenly flips over we can't have that so I'm going to add this uh, I'll use alt and drag it up to the top line as well let's just get rid of that there we go uh, and I'll paste that transition there as well and we kind of think that should do it except that as soon as the transition starts happening we get that one uh, coming through in the middle and so what I can do is click on that top one the copy that I've made and in our inspector once more we can go to composite and I'm going to turn the opacity all the way down to zero that lets that one disappear but it still allows us to do this page turn transition which is why it's useful and then this all should work and we get that lovely last page great I've got a couple last steps to go I can go to the deliver page And over here, I'm going to select the YouTube 1080p, uh, which is a handy preset. I'm also going to normalize the audio uh, just to make sure it's at the right volume for YouTube and choose a place to put my video. All right, then we save it there. I'll add that to the render queue. And on the side, it's now been added and I can render. And this might also take a little while. It first goes through and um, kind of analyzes the audio and now goes through for the second time to export okay our video has finished exporting we can just right click in here and open file location and there we have it there is our video now of course that's not the only thing because we of course want our thumbnail and so I'm going to go back to our edit page bring back our media pool and this timeline is essentially this that we've got open here so I'm going to duplicate that it's called timeline one copy just so that I have got that timeline saved properly I'm going to go to the end just place my playhead there and load up that PNG there this could be our thumbnail except I don't want it to be just that blank bit with the with the black on the side so let's select it 
Let's use our transform again, and this time we'll use our zooming. Okay, get it nice and close, and then use our position Y to just bring it downwards. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit more. Bring it down. Something like that could look quite nice. Of course, if you've got a logo, uh, this is a good place to put it on. If you have that picture, you can drag it in here and and add it on uh, on in a separate sort of you know, layer, and this will work very nicely. Once we're happy with that thumbnail, I'll go to color, and then right-click on the picture, grab still, and where that still is in the gallery, if the gallery wasn't open, again right-click on that and export. Then find my folder again, and let's just call it thumbnail. And so now we have our video with a thumbnail. Make sure that it's a JPG, a JPEG file. Um, that's what YouTube will accept. And I'm ready to go and upload to YouTube. I could show you that, um, but I think there have been so many videos on how to upload to YouTube. They're, they're all out there. I'm not going to waste your time on that. If you need it, you can go find it. Otherwise, happy music making, and I'll see you next time.